Hi, my name is Jeremy Lickness. I'm Program Manager for .NET Data at Microsoft. And today I'd like to show you how easy it is to add a rich API to your application using Entity Framework Core 6 and GraphQL. Let's get started. Here I've got a simple model in a web application. This is a recipe. The recipe has steps and ingredients. So a step has a duration and instructions. And then an ingredient has some quantity information, a description, et cetera. For EF Core 6, we use this recipe's context to glue it to the database, so to speak. We're exposing the recipes. I've got a method to seed the database for the first time. And I describe the relationship between the entities. In our main program, we're wiring this up with a DB context factory and using SQLite. I've already populated the database. I've also added a traditional REST controller. This controller uses Entity Framework Core to perform various operations. Let's run this and see what it looks like through the API. So it's spinning up a website right now. I'm gonna bring that website into view. And then I'm going to hit the API endpoint for recipes. As you can see, we've got this well-formatted JSON response. But there's a few things I want to point out. It's bringing back every field. So we're getting the ID, the measurement, the denominator, et cetera. And it's also not bringing these back in a specific order. So I would either have to modify my REST interface to provide parameters for sorting or have some sort of default sort mechanism. But I think there's a better way to do this, and that's with GraphQL. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to use Hot Chocolate, which is a GraphQL library for .NET, to stand up my service. So I'm going to go into my NuGet package manager. I'm going to search for hot chocolate. And I'm going to choose the ASP.NET Core version of hot chocolate because I have an ASP.NET Core app. So we're going to pick this. This is version 12, which is the latest version of hot chocolate, and we're going to install that. And of course, we have to accept all the different licensing agreements, et cetera. Now what we're gonna do is to use hot chocolate. First, I'm going to create a class that's similar to the data context, but it's for GraphQL and it describes what to expose through GraphQL. So I'm gonna call this query because I'm gonna expose a query element for this demo. I'm gonna say public, I queryable of recipe, get recipes. And for the sake of this example, I'm just going to do a new list of recipe as queryable. This is just to show you how it gets wired up. So I've got a class that exposes a queryable for recipes. Now I'm going to go into my startup. And I'm going to add the services. So the first thing I'll do is builder services add GraphQL server. And then I have to tell it what types it supports. So I'm going to say add query type and give it the query class that I provided. So that injects GraphQL into the equation. Down here, after I'm mapping my routes, I also want to map my GraphQL route. And I'm going to just simply make it GraphQL. Let's go ahead and run that. It was just a few simple steps to add that in.
We'll get that up and running. And once again, we have our basic web application up. Let's go ahead and navigate to the GraphQL endpoint. And what we're going to see here is something that's called Banana Pop Cake, which is a built-in explorer for GraphQL. What this does is it allows me to set up projects inside my browser. It's built into Hot Chocolate, and it allows me to explore the API. So here I can see there's a Get Recipes. I can drill into Recipe, see that it has ingredients. I can drill into Ingredient, and I can actually specify a query. And here's where GraphQL is a little bit different from REST. In GraphQL, what you can do is you can specify the exact fields that you want to get back. So here I'm just saying, give me the names. Now, this is not going to do anything yet because remember, I returned an empty field. So let's go ahead and wire this into Entity Framework. I'm going to add one more package. And that's called Hot Chocolate Data. And that provides data services to the application. Actually, we'll do data.entity framework, which will pull in data by default. Now that we have that, we need to wire in the extended service. So I'm going to do a couple things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add support for doing things like add projections so that I can just bring back the fields I want, add filtering, and add sorting. So these brings these capabilities into the application. The next thing I'm going to do is come over to my definition of what the query looks like. And instead of returning something hard-coded, I'm going to change this to inject my context. This is my entity framework context as a service. Hot Chocolate will automatically see this and know to pass the context in. And then I'm going to say context recipes. That's already queryable, so I don't have to do anything else. Because I want to use projection, I'm going to use these attributes to specify what I want to have available. Let's go ahead and run that. We'll come back to our main page, go into GraphQL. And this time, we're going to say recipes. What in the recipe is interesting to us? Let's say name. And let's also go ahead and get the ingredients list, but just the name. If I run that, just by building that on the fly, what you'll see is over here, I've retrieved my recipe and the ingredients by the name. Now these ingredients are not ordered in any sort of direction. So let's go ahead and fix that. This is the last thing I wanna do. Before I add that capability, let me just show you, I've got logging turned on. Notice that the actual select statement that went to the database is only selecting the name from this recipe and the name from this ingredient. So our projection goes all the way through. It doesn't pull everything from the database. It actually maps it all the way to the database, which is super convenient. Let's go ahead and close this out. And we're gonna do just one more thing to this application. 
we're going to go into our recipe definition. And on ingredients, we're going to allow sorting. We'll pull in our reference, run the application. And see it's spinning up right now. I'm going to go back into my handy little banana pop cake interface. And this time for the ingredients, I'm going to tell it that I want to sort or order. And what I want to order by is name ascending. And just like that, my client is able to make a request and now you can see this has been sorted the way we requested. And that's all there is to adding GraphQL to your Entity Framework core application. For more details, follow the link at the bottom and happy coding.